In this video, I'm gonna go over the top five mistakes that I see people making that it's stopping them from growing their chest. And I'm gonna show you some adjustments that you can make to help you grow your chest. And this is ones that I give my clients all the time. And my goal for this video is to make sure that I can make fitness something that everybody they can understand. I'm not gonna try and use really overly scientific words and make things super complicated. I'm gonna make it as simple and easy to understand as possible. So if you wanna grow your chest, make sure you watch the video. I know chest for a lot of guys is something that they really wanna grow. Maybe it's from watching Rocky or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day or whatever. But for a lot of guys, chest is something that's really important it makes you feel like you know like a man so hopefully you can avoid these mistakes and use these tips that I give to my clients and that I use for myself let's get into it so I'm gonna show you the top five chest mistakes in this video but I'm gonna show you while I'm working out this one I'm not really gonna call it a mistake but something that you should do is just get a little bit of a warm-up going so I like to use a band pull some tension into it go behind the back Come here, open up the chest, warm up the shoulders. Just get going, you know? Gotta get a little loose before you start going. This is another warm up I like to do. So basically we're gonna go rear delt row, externally rotate, press up, back down. This just helps with external rotation and lower traps, so for scapular depression. It's a good warm up for shoulder health and I feel better when I get into position for all of my chest movements. I do like about three sets of 12 here. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you want a big chest and you don't know how. You might've tried a lot of different things, but uh, you're having trouble finding the connection and then figuring out what exactly do you need to do to build it. So a lot of times when you have a lagging body part, it's because you don't have a good connection to it. You can't fire the muscle whenever you want to, right? So something that you can do, I'm not gonna call this a mistake, is doing a light movement just to build that connection and flex the muscle, get the blood in there, get that neurological connection so that when you move on to your compound movements or the heavy movement, the one that's gonna put the most amount of damage and um, you know, help you grow it the most, uh, you, have a, you have a strong connection with it as you move into that movement. But um, a chest fly is a great thing for that. To set it up, you wanna make sure that you are able to get the stretch. So I have this set beyond parallel with my body. I'm gonna do single arm. You're gonna lift my chest up, right? Depress my scapula, keep my shoulder back, and we're just gonna come across and flex the chest. Keep it super light, just focusing on contracting the chest, keeping the tension on there the entire time. You want a smooth motion. And really what we're doing is just getting it warm, get some blood flowing, and building that connection so that when we move on to the heavier movements, we can fire it more easily. So I've only got like 50 pounds on here. Just really focusing on squeezing. I'm gonna do probably two or three sets of 12 just to get going and then I'll move on. Uh, so again, not really a mistake, but something that you can do if you feel like you have a hard time being able to turn your chest on when you're doing the other movements. All right, so now that I'm warmed up, I'm gonna move on to my first big movement, which is dumbbell flat bench press. Uh, and this is the first mistake that people make. You don't have to do a flat bench press. I know that's a huge misconception that people have is that you know flat benches, uh, flat barbell bench press is the best thing that you could do. But uh, you could get the same pressing motion with a dumbbell. And if you have, this is especially for people with longer limbs, right? So if you have a longer upper arm, it's really hard to get into the right position on a barbell because it's, it's straight across, right? You actually want your arms to be closer to 45, this upper arm path, to match up with the lines of your chest fiber because your chest fiber goes from here to here. So you want this upper arm to be on the same path with the chest fibers. But if you have longer limbs, right? If you're all the way out here and you're on a barbell, you end up being more flared out and then you use your shoulders. So you want to do a flat press of some sort, but it doesn't have to be barbell bench press. So. All right, the second mistake is not using the appropriate weight for you. So that includes not warming up properly, not working up to a heavy weight, and not pushing yourself hard enough. Because in order to grow a muscle, you have to take it to the stimulating reps. So it's basically the few reps before failure. So if you're not using a weight that's challenging enough, you're not gonna grow if you are not warming up so that you can get to a place to where you're at those stimulating reps because if you just jump into straight heavy weights, your body's not primed to be holding that heavy weight. So then you're not getting what you need out of the set. So what I do is I'll start at about 
50 to 60% of what I know that I could do kind of depends on the day, right? Maybe I'll hit it twice and then I'll slowly move up in increments of, you know, 10 to 15%. So uh, for me, uh, the gym here only goes up to 100 pounds. Um, but I'm gonna start, I started at 50, I'm gonna go to 65, then I'll probably go to 80, then I'll probably go 90, and then if I can, I'll feel like I'll, if I feel like I'm, I'm feeling good today, I'll hit the hundreds. But the point is you have to incrementally go up to get your body primed to hold that heavy weight, get your CNS primed, and build up to the weight that's actually gonna give you the stimulating reps that you need to grow the muscle. It takes a while to kind of learn how to gauge how much weight you could do when you're gonna hit failure. But the more you do it, the more you take yourself close to failure, the easier, it'll get, or the easier it'll get to be able to gauge. But again, like, if you don't challenge the muscle, right, if you're not forcing it to do something that it has to adapt to, something that it needs, that it can't physically handle right now, to give it the signal like, okay, I need to grow, put on more muscle, get stronger to be able to uh, adapt to this stressor, right, then you're not gonna grow because you're just doing things that you know that you can already do. Your body already knows they could do it. You know, it's like, uh, it's like if you were trying to learn how to do math and all you kept doing was two plus two, right? It doesn't matter how many times you do it, that's all you know, right? But if you wanna challenge yourself, if you wanna grow, you have to do something more difficult than what you can handle. And that is where the growth happens. And that's a, that's a metaphor for the gym and for life. Ooh. Oh, well, I fucked up the angle, but uh, this is gonna be my top set. So you gotta make sure you're rested enough, your breathing is normalized before you uh, get into that top set, and um, basically just psych yourself up for it. You know, focus on getting everything you have out of at least one set. The most important reps are the last few reps of the set, the stimulating reps, the ones that are taking you closest to, or you know, even beyond failure. Um, you wanna have at least one set that you're pushing right to that edge of failure. Uh, one thing I do with my clients is most people don't know how to fucking train hard, so I'll just give them more volume. Uh, most people can't gauge when they're hitting true failure when they're using heavier weights, and that also causes more risk for injury. So I don't like doing anything really, I don't like giving my clients anything below eight reps just because it is uh, harder for people to gauge, and uh, I don't want anybody getting injured. So, I got the hundreds here, it's my last set. I'm gonna go for uh, 10 reps, about, or uh, until I just can't anymore. So that, that's what a true set to failure look like. You know, the bar speed should slow down. A lot of people, they'll stop their sets and they're not using the appropriate weight. You know, this is the mistake that I'm talking about here. They're not using the appropriate weight to get to those simulating reps and they're not pushing themselves hard enough. You have to get to the point to where you either mechanically break down, which means you can't hold your form, or you physically can't move the weight anymore. And you gotta fight through that sticking point. You have to at least attempt, you know, a lot of people give up way too early. They're like, oh, it slowed down, it burns, whatever, right? You gotta just give it that one set where you take it as far as you can. I didn't get as many as I wanted. I got eight, but that's all right. You're not gonna be as strong as you wanna be or as strong as you were last week. You know, you're not gonna improve every week, but you know, that could be due to a bunch of factors like sleep, you know, meal, how far you are into a cut. So don't worry about it. All right, so the third mistake is pressing with your shoulders. So, like I was saying earlier, if you're here, right, if your elbows are flared out, this is more in line with your front delt. If you're here, your elbows are too flared out, and if your shoulders come off the bench, which I see a lot. So if you see someone's back rounding, and they're pushing up, and their shoulders are coming off the bench, and their elbows are flared out, like this, this is a sign that they're not getting any chest, right? 
This is uh, more common with people with longer limbs, I've noticed. This is not the position you want to be in. Which kind of brings me to mistake number four, which is not getting into the proper position, right? So the problem with that last problem is most people have no idea how they're trying to set up their form. They just lean back on the bench and they just move weight from A to B. The thing is, when you're doing any exercise, your goal is to contract that muscle. If your goal is hypertrophy, right? It, to grow the muscle. Your goal is to flex that muscle as hard as possible through kind of as much range as possible safely. And so the exercise that you choose is your roadmap on how you get to that contraction. And then the weight that you use is just the load that you take. But if you don't know how to position yourself to get that contraction, moving weight from point A to point B is not really gonna do anything for you, right? Like I can pick up a dumbbell doing a million different things, right? I can squat down and I could pick it up, I could squat back up, I could bend fully over, I could do a bunch of different things, right? So it's not just moving you know, weight down, up, you know, it's how do you do it? And so that's where position comes into play. And most people set up, this is a big problem, they have no idea what they're trying to do when they're setting things up, right? So what you wanna do, is you wanna get scapula depression. So basically get your shoulder blades, you know, these right here, down as much as possible. So a lot of people that, are, have, that have trouble with it, they just do this, right? They just shove their shoulders down, which is not exactly what we're going for. So a better way to conceptualize it is stick your arms out like here, and you want to externally rotate at the shoulder. So lift your shoulders up, don't depress them, you know, just kind of lift them up here. Externally rotate, which means rotate your arm out this way. So your elbow should be pointing the ground. When you do this way, that is going to naturally depress your scapula. So you're gonna come here, depress the scap. We'll put your arms in the front, right? So once you bring your arms to the front, you're able to contract your chest more. But you also gotta keep them shoulders back. So here, and like I was talking about the last one, don't let your shoulders come forward. So externally rotate here, keep those shoulders back. Try and imagine pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades and then bring your arms forward here. And now you should be able to feel your chest contracting. So this position where your shoulders are with the external rotation, scapular depression, shoulder blade depression, you know, keeping your shoulder blades down and keeping them back, that's gonna be where you wanna be to get that contraction in your chest. So when you're down here, that's exactly what you wanna recreate, right? So you wanna think, what does this feel like? When you externally rotate, it naturally lifts your chest up, lifts your rib cage up. And you're gonna come back down here. You're gonna pin those shoulder blades down, which is lifting your chest up. You're gonna pinch them together. And it's gonna be here, right? So now your, your, your rib cage is expanded, your chest is up, your shoulders are back. You're externally rotated. You're in a good position to utilize your chest. And then you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna have your elbows at a, or your upper arm at about 45 degrees. And you're gonna press up while maintaining this posture, right? And then another thing about positioning is if you're trying to bias like the upper chest, right? You want that upper shelf up closer to the clavicle, right? So you're gonna wanna do an incline, right? So flat is kind of full chest, decline would be like lower chest, incline is gonna be upper chest, but the amount of incline is gonna vary. A lot of people will also incline the bench up here, right? They think like, oh, incline, let me incline it, right? But the, the more inclined you get, the more shoulders is involved. You actually only really need a very slight incline. Like right here is pretty good. It's just the first notch above uh, flat. So the positioning matters in, in terms of how are you getting into position and then what, what position are you putting yourselves in? You don't have to put this super high incline because that's gonna get more and more shoulders. So those are, that's another mistake. I forget what number I'm on, but we'll keep going. So next move I'm gonna do is machine incline. I like machines for certain movements uh, just because it's, it's kind of safer to fail. You know, uh, there's a stopping point. It's, the weight's not gonna fall down on you, so it's much easier. Also, if you have a hard time getting in the right position and feeling it out, the machine, if it's a good machine, will take you on the right path. So like I was using in the analogy earlier, right? this is the roadmap to get that contraction. So if you're not able to do it, that means there's something wrong about your positioning or how you're doing it. So. Uh, same thing, right? You're gonna externally rotate, boom, chest up. You want this, uh, this bar to be right at about mid chest, like splitting the nipple and the collarbone. So, I guess I, uh, I'm already on number five. I got one more after this. I uh, it didn't count well, but uh, 
this is a huge mistake. So just like the, uh, the other tip that I was giving, right? You wanna make sure that you're in the right position. The other part of that is controlling the weight. You know, how many times have you seen somebody, you know, benching or doing whatever and they're just like, and they're just letting the weight fly around or they're letting it fall back down on them, right? You wanna be in control of the muscle the entire time, right? You're putting the load through that muscle. You're putting that tension from the weight. You wanna control that weight throughout the entirety of the motion, right? Part of the movement is the negative part. And on top of that, when you let the weight fall on you, that puts you at more risk for injury, especially when you get into heavier weights, right? Imagine if I had three or four plates and I just let it drop and I tried to catch it at the bottom. You know, you're letting a, the weight free fall and you're trying to catch it, that's, that's a huge risk for injury. Imagine trying to catch 300 pounds on the way down, you know? That's uh, not what you wanna do. So instead, you know, you wanna, it doesn't have to be incredibly slow, but at any moment, you should feel the tension on the muscle that you're trying to change, right? Did I say change or train? See, slow and controlled. I'm not going overly slow where I'm like, one, two, three. You can do that if that's something that you're having a lot of trouble with, right? So you can give yourself a count, but you can see at any moment I can stop and I'm still in control with the muscle that I'm trying to train. Control the weight, squeeze at the top, get that contraction, stay in position. This is a better angle showing uh, this bar. You can see it's slanted down, right? So you get that elbow tuck, but also this handle is right about mid chest, you know? Splitting the difference between the collarbone and uh, my nips. I don't know, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but <laughs> it is. <sighs> Another reason that you could use machines is if you wanted to do something like a set extender, right? If you wanted to go try and go beyond failure, if you want to do some partial safely, or if you wanted to do something like a cluster set. So a cluster set would be like, doing four sets of five, using a weight that you can only use for 10 reps, but you only do, you do the four sets of five, but there's only 20 seconds rest in between. So you're kind of extending that 10 rep max into, into whole, ideally 20 reps by uh, having a short break every five reps, you know, but if you're using something like dumbbells or something like that, you don't want to have to constantly rack and unrack and do all that, you know, so you could use a machine for that. Uh, sometimes when I just feel like pumping some blood in there, I might do, like an EMOM, which is like every minute on the minute. Those are fun, they're challenging. I'm not saying they're like the, the greatest thing for hypertrophy, but you gotta enjoy training sometimes, you know? And sometimes you just wanna catch a fucking pump. So I just realized that I had the, uh, the ISO way too high on the camera, so the picture was probably very bright in the last few slides. But here we go. So the last mistake, I think it's the sixth one now, even though I said five, and I probably gave actually a lot more mistakes than people make. But uh, the last one is not applicable to this movement, but it's doing one rep maxes, man. Like doing a one rep max isn't doing anything except stroking your ego. In terms of building muscle, it's not doing shit. You put, your, you put yourself at a high risk for injury, right? If you're getting close to your one rep max, like let's just say you're even good at deciding what you should be aiming for, a lot can go wrong there, especially if you don't have the other mistakes down, right? Like you can't, you don't have proper positioning. You can't judge the weight correctly. You can't control it. That's when people, uh, this is specifically really for barbell bench press, flat barbell bench press. People try and max out on it. And what happens? They tear their fucking pec or they blow out their shoulder, right? So you have to get the basics down. You have to be able to do the movement properly, be able to gauge weight. And then maybe one time you could do a one rep max. But I can tell you, I competed for, I competed for like, what is it? I don't even know. I competed in bodybuilding for seven years and for five of them, I, turned, I was a professional, I was an IFBB pro and I never once did flat bench press, never once. So you don't need it and I absolutely, and I, I actually, oh, sorry, I never once did flat bench press and I never once did a one rep max. I probably could have done 315, but I've seen way too many of my friends do a flat bench with exactly 315 or maybe more, and they tore their pecs, and also with weighted dips. So 
don't make that fucking mistake because it's not gonna help you grow any muscle, especially if you suck at hitting chest already. Don't fucking do a one rep max. But anyways, my third movement, it's gonna be a fly movement. I like doing cable flies. There's better tension. On a dumbbell, you really only get tension at the bottom when you're in a stress position, which is here. But on a dumbbell, once you're up here, the weight is above you, the weight's stacked on top of your joints, so your chest isn't working in this range. So this is where cables, I would say, are a better option. And I personally like to do them seated and braced against the chair, so that way I'm not limited by my balance. But same thing, right? We're gonna externally rotate at the shoulder, elbows down, come up and in, squeeze, come back down. So a tip for doing cable flies is you wanna make sure that again, this lines up at about mid chest right here, but the cable has to line up with your elbow and your shoulder. Because you want the, the line of force to be going straight through your joints and you only wanna be loading your chest, right? If you're like this, then all of a sudden the cable is pulling your arm this way and you have to resist with internal rotation. That's gonna hurt your elbow, probably gonna hurt your shoulder. So you want this cable to line up with your elbow and your shoulder pass. So here, it's always in one line. Here is a fun little uh, adjustment that you can make. It'll help you get better range of motion, help you feel it in your chest better because you'll allow your scapula to wrap around. But, uh, <laughs> wrap around, pause. But uh, anyways, so you're gonna put a foam roller right here. You might not be able to do it. You might not be able to set this up in your gym, but just so you know, in the event that you can, you could put this right here, right? This is gonna allow your shoulder blades to wrap around, which will allow your shoulders or your chest to get a better stretch. So it's a little annoying to set up. See, now my shoulders can wrap around the pad. One downfall to this setup is that it's very annoying to set up, but, you also want to pay attention, right? I'm not. It's important to see that I'm getting as much range of motion as possible. I'm feeling a real stretch in my chest here. Coming straight up and then squeezing. I'm not throwing the weight around. I'm under control the whole time. Just so you can see the pump. And you know, I'm not bullshitting. Now I'm much smaller than uh, I used to be. It's just so you can see how the chest is working. Weird angle, but uh, <laughs> you can see the chest pump. All right, so hopefully that video was helpful for you. Hopefully you can implement some of these changes and avoid some of these mistakes so you can avoid injury and help grow your chest. But, uh, but if you need more help and you wanna learn more about losing fat, building muscle, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hopefully like the video. And if you want uh, my personal help, getting in shape and uh, making sure that you create this healthy lifestyle so that you can be in shape for the rest of your life and understand how to do all this for yourself, you can uh, apply at the link below. But see you next time.